Are you interested in data analytics in auditing and its impact in our profession? Stay tuned, we have a lot in store for you. Hello everyone, welcome and thanks for joining today. We're going to talk a bit about data analytics and with us today is Chief Audit Executive Phil Hurd. Welcome Phil. Oh, thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So uh, it's great to have you here because we are very interested in data analytics. It's a topic that has been uh, talked about quite a bit in the profession for quite some time. So I was wondering if you could spend a few moments just helping us better understand what it is, and then we'll move into the impact it has had and will continue to have in our profession. So please define it for us. What is data analytics? Well, I, I think probably the best way that I can explain this is, is to reference it to the early part of my career. Um, when I was a, a young man, I joined the Army, and I went into electronics warfare. And part of the understanding there was that everything had attributes. And it, the more you could analyze the attributes of those signals, of those communications, uh, uh, of those um, pieces of data flowing across uh, the radio, the networks, the microwave relay, so forth and so on, you could better understand what's happening. And when I left the service and I came into uh, auditing, which was in the late 1990s, there was this huge movement going on between um, what you might call traditional accounting and uh, electronic accounting. You saw tools like QuickBooks, uh, PeopleSoft ERM systems, you saw Oracle systems, you saw all these things being implemented into medium to large scale businesses. We moved on now to these type of systems being implemented in almost every type of business, no matter its size. And so this gives a tremendous perspective from auditing as to how our um, profession is changing. And what I mean by that is, as you enter the audit profession nowadays, when people say, what are your skills? They automatically begin to assume that data analytics is gonna be one of them. And when people say data analytics in our modern age, they envision big data, which is, is a collection of data sources that have, have been put together and are being mined or harvested for information. And so that's kind of the vision that people have. But analytics itself is just a generic term to mean you are analyzing the information flowing across um, your organization. And in that respect, Ener oh, go ahead. And organizations nowadays, uh, well, over the last few years or decades, they have been really accumulating a lot of data. And a big challenge has been transforming that data into information, and then even then being able to prioritize the value and the usage of it. So how have you seen that impacting the way that auditors interact with their management teams and their boards, and how they're able to help the organization manage that flood of data that's been generated pretty much daily? Uh, that's an excellent question. You know, as we move into a analytics driven era, auditors are more and more expected to have skills to look at information, not only to provide assurance, but to provide um, information that can be used to create thought partnerships with management on the best way the organization can go. Auditors can give that objective review of that information and certainly um, using analytical techniques can um, help management better understand their own organization and the path to more success. Do you see the, the movement from tables and, and so on, which I, I remember very well when I started an audit myself, uh, that was very prevalent. Uh, tables with information, of course, that's just an extension of the system generated reports. And they're moving more into pictures and graphs and diagrams and a lot of color. Uh, do you see that also making inroads in audit and how auditors do use that technique during field work, but also when they are reporting their results? Is that something that you're noticing as well? Oh, absolutely. What you're talking about there are data visualization techniques. And one of the things that we need to understand is we as human beings, uh, we're more like video processors than we are word processors. And so while a lot of the analytics that we do will be looking at words, numbers, uh, equations, the display of those results to be assimilated and used by management most readily needs to be in a visual form. And there are new tools and new techniques for visualizing that information that 
literally haven't been possible as little as 15 years ago. And so if you're, if you're coming into the profession now, that visualization ability is a very needed skill. Uh, let's talk a bit about the, the computing power that's now at our fingertips, the ability to, let's call it crunch uh, volumes, vast amounts of information uh, very quickly. So uh, many years ago, we had a number of limitations in terms of the capacity of different applications to, to process large amounts of data, but that has been growing. And in, for all intents and purposes, it seems as though we have unlimited potential there, right? No matter how big the file, there is a way to process it. Do you see that also making a huge impact in how it's transforming the way that we plan and execute audits? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I remember uh, in the early 90s and uh, when Excel, which is one of the common tools that's available to, to most business people, uh, came out, it had a limitation of, I believe it was 65,000 lines. And uh, the use case overrode that so quickly. And so the next version would go even further. And now I, I believe it is an unlimited number. And the reason for that is across this, this true information age, this, this data-driven information age, we have seen globalization really come to our front door. I, I mean, to give you perspective of this, right now in the world in which we live in, if you had some unique good or product that you wanted to sell, you can set up a website and in minutes be a global company. You can sell to people anywhere in the world. We have logistic systems that will get it there. You have all sorts of um, support systems in place. And so now the number of transactions, if you're a large organization, take for example an Amazon, you're talking about hundreds of millions of transactions likely every day. And so to have a cap on the amount of transactions that you can analyze simply would be unacceptable. Are you, are you then uh, foreseeing the end of sampling as we know it? I believe that sampling will always be a part of auditing, but the way in which we've done it will change dramatically. You see, early in the, in the I guess it would be the early 90s and maybe even into the early 2000s, sampling was considered a way to then make a case for extrapolation of whatever you found in the sampling to the rest of the data. I think that's going to be completely opposite. I think as data analytics comes around, you're going to see an analysis of 100% of an available population electronically, and then the sampling will be the result of that electronic analysis. You won't be extrapolating through the population, you'll be targeting specific transactions that for some reason didn't meet the business rules, didn't meet the normal flow of data, did not meet the expectation of the company. So it'll be more of a targeted sampling, but it'll be the result of the analytics. It won't be the precursor to the extrapolation and the expectation of the data. Very interesting, and that's very powerful because what it does, it takes away that uh, that the need to justify, explain, and even convince our clients in many cases that what we did was sound work and that uh, what we saw in the sample can be projected into, can be extrapolated into the population. That has, for many years, been a debate for a lot of auditors. By going through the entire population, it takes away that whole discussion. So that's very, very helpful. Now, another thing that I'm curious about has to do with continuous anything, continuous Auditing, continuous monitoring, continuous risk assessment. How do you see uh, the, the, the growth, the, the maturity of data analytics in helping us with risk assessment, continuous controls monitoring, and continuous auditing? Oh, I think this is a blessed time for that. And, and I truly mean that because up until about 12 to 15 years ago, continuous monitoring was kind of like the holy grail. You wanted to seek for that. Now it's an expectation. And because it is an expectation, you can set up continuous auditing through, through all kinds of tools. You can help management in ways that auditors would never have been able to do it before. Now I'm in no way suggesting that we, we are expecting to take away management's role as the official monitoring of the activities, but we can certainly enhance them. And we can do a lot for management that they would do if they had the time. 
And that is a wonderful thing because it allows us to expand our skill set, expand our profession, and be of more value and more uh, support to the organizations in which we serve. Yes, I, I believe that this is going to definitely help us increase this thing called reasonable assurance and get us closer uh, to their expectations, which always is, is rising. Uh, one last question that I have has to do with what's the future looking like? So as we look at data analytics and the evolution and its maturity and, and improvement in terms of the ability to crunch through massive amounts of data, what does the future look like? Oh. Uh the future is bright. There's an old song I, I remember, and I'm probably dating myself here, but uh, the, the chorus of it was, the future's so bright, I gotta wear shades. And that's how I look at the auditing profession because it, it's an amazing thing now. We have artificial intelligence that is no longer something in a lab in a university somewhere. It's something that you can right now go uh, and, and buy analytic or artificial intelligence engines. Machine learning is becoming a, a base programming set in uh, certain programming languages. And so now you can train machines to look for these mundane problems that as auditors we were, we were always dealing with. And you can then return that to management. And Eventually, I even see that we'll have larger data sets, you'll have artificial intelligence built in to your ERP and your ERM systems. And, you know, as I look to the distant future, we have quantum computing on the rise, we have um, processors that make what we have now look like toys for children. And so to be able to live in a world where we can take advantage of those skills and we can electronically anytime access information to increase our skill sets like we're doing here, that, that's just a stunning and amazing future. And I am, I am very pleased that I'm in the business world at a time when I can see that coming because I believe that as we further our skill sets, you're going to have more and more creativity come forward. And I, I believe we are God's highest form of creation. And when we build these things, we are uses, utilizing and using the, these wonderful talents that we have. And the more you can take away the mundane and you can add to the creativity of where can our business go? How can we build this? How can we better mankind? I think that's an amazing future that we should all strive for. This is very exciting, and, and I, I share your enthusiasm. I can see you are very enthusiastic and passionate about it, and it's definitely contagious. Thank you very much, Phil. I really appreciate you taking these precious moments to talk with us a bit about data analytics, where we have been, where we are, and where we're going, and how the future looks very, very bright for what we can do and how we can continue to help and support our organizations. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, we have a lot more content to share with you, so please subscribe to our channel. There's a lot there for you. Thank you.